going on guys? My name is Noah and this is Broken Arrow Bison. All right, so we got everything loaded up. We're ready to start building some corners and start setting some posts and uh, doing some welding and concreting today. So we've got our welder right over here, the generator to power the welder. We've got all of our eight foot pipe cut and then the six foot braces to go along with it. We're gonna be setting them up just like this here and uh, welding it and then concrete in these holes. We've got all the concrete ready to go and then our water tank to be able to uh, pump in the holes and mix that concrete up. So we're getting pretty close to getting Buffalo set up out here. We're about two weeks away. So not too far away, almost ready to go. Really, we're kind of on the home stretch on this. Um, welding up the braces and setting the corners and gates and everything will probably take a day or two and then running the wires um, and setting all that up it's going to be about a day or two also so we're really close not too far away um, really excited to be able to have buffalo out here it's been a long time coming and uh, just really really looking forward to it this is bones and his buddy all right, enough of me talking, and let's get this done. a little bit of what I'm doing here. Uh, the gentleman I learned to do fence from, he did fence for 25 years and he would put his dry bags of concrete into the ground and his explanation of doing that was if you ever have a bag of concrete sit in the garage for a while, um, you know even a month, two months, um, in humid conditions it will just turn to a rock. Um, it absorbs the moisture from the air and so his thought process was that you really didn't need to uh, put, con put water in the holes uh, with it. But, um, and so that's actually what I did on the last fence and it worked out really well, surprisingly. Um, I went ahead and just took his advice on it and, and the fence lasted uh, a long time, it's still standing. So uh, what I did with this one is a little bit different because I built the last fence out of solid hedge posts and they were a little bit bigger around so my concern on this oil field pipe is because the diameter is smaller um, and the concrete wouldn't be set up I'm worried that when I start putting tension on the wires it will start pulling through the concrete before it gets a chance to set up. So what I did with this was I went ahead and put two five gallons of buckets of water in here and then I put two bags of concrete on top of that and that way it gives it a chance to just really fully seat. I'm just going to go ahead and weld this up uh, this weekend and then the following weekend I'm going to come back and run my wires. That way it gives it a chance to fully set up. So the last fence I did, I ran a five strand 
Um, I decided to run a six strand on this one. And the reason for that was, is I had really good luck with the five strand with the Buffalo, but I actually had a couple beef calves that um, the gap was a little bit farther apart and they would push through the fence. So there's one caveat to electric fence. And that is if the animal gets shocked on their front half, they will move backwards most, most of the time. If the animal gets shocked on their second half, they will move forwards. It's just a natural tendency that, you know, if they feel pain from the back end, they'll go forwards. If they feel, feel pain from the front end, they'll go backwards. Well, what I ended up having with my uh, beef calves is the gap was so large and the electric fence pulsates. So they would stick their heads through, it would, it would be off, stick their heads through to dry, try to you know, grab something or get it on the other side, and then it would pulsate, and by then, they would be on their, the wire would be on their second half, and they would go all the way through. So that's one thing that I wanted to kind of try to deal with on this fence, so I'm putting the wires a little bit closer together on this. I decided to go uh, eight and a half inches apart, and that'll make a six strand if I decide to go with a four and a half foot fence. So. This is four and a half foot here. I'm gonna come an inch down on that, and then I'm gonna go eight inches. So this would be an inch here, and then I'm gonna come eight and a half inches all the way down. And then eight and a half inches from there. And that, so I'm gonna have a wire here, and a wire here, and so on and so forth. Um, and a wire here. So that will tell me where I need to put my brace. I need to put my brace in between. It doesn't matter which wire, but you want your brace on the top end of this um, corner. And I want it in between these wires. That way the wire isn't running into this brace and constantly grounding out. I had a little bit of a problem on my last fence with that. Um, I didn't, didn't really think about that. So we'll uh, try to fix that with this fence.
so that's about it for today. What we ended up doing is getting most of the corners um, all welded up. Some of them are tacked up. We've got a couple more to do, um, but we're really close. So if you haven't already, remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon. That will tell you whenever we uh, put out new videos. And for those of you who watched our last video, I asked the question, how high can buffalo jump? And that answer is full grown bulls have been known to jump six and a half feet. They've been able to clear six and a half feet from a standstill. So for the next trivia, I'm gonna ask you guys, how long does it take for a buffalo calf to be able to keep up with his mother after being born? How long does it take for a calf to be able to be born and keep up with its mother in a run? Um, after it's born. So leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think. Love to be able to hear your answers and we'll see you next time.